Thank you. I'm not sure how long this will take. I'll call you. Sergeant. Oh, Riker! Forget it, soldier. But, sir, I saw him but, try Forget to... it, I Don't said. Don't do me any favors, huh? What, you just shut up. Okay. Come on, put it away. He's uh, been convicted of treason. You know he's going to hang. He's a, he's a little off balance. He, he stumbled, okay? Obviously, you heard all the news. I like the part where Colonel Moran, General Bailey, found you and my wife in a loving embrace in her room. What did she do? Give you the whole indoctrination course? Paul William Riker, classic misfit. Every man's failure. She came 6,000 miles to be with you, Riker. <laughs> and ended up with you. Now, how about that? <sighs> Even if it were true... It wouldn't be important right now. No, it wouldn't. I mean, you prosecuted me at the first trial. You convinced the jury that I was guilty. Why the sudden change of mind? Nothing has happened to change my mind. Oh? Well, then why are you trying for a new trial? Huh? I mean, why so hot to defend me now? What do you got in mind? Now, look. If Anne was what I had in mind, all I had to do is fake a defense and let you hang. Now you're being realistic. Okay. Paul, where are you going? Uh, to find you, counsel, you can trust. Just one thing. Is Anne in love with you? You have responsible witnesses who found your wife and me together. So everything I say uh, just makes it sound worse. Which, by the way, is exactly the same spot that you're at. Every time you open your mouth, you sound more like a traitor. Now, whose guilt are we going to discuss, yours or mine? Because you can prove me guilty, and all I have to do is live with it. But if the court finds you guilty a second time, brother, that's all she wrote. What a Section 8 situation. Snafu, Section 8 situation. I gotta go with you because nobody else wants it. But you could be a Judas. A smooth, slick tongue, Jonas. How is he? Comfortable. Difficult. All right, Mrs. Riker. You can see your husband now. Oh, thank you. And, uh, he knows about everything that's happened us being found together. Major Whitaker, Captain Apple, and see Colonel Purvis. Can you tell me where he is? Yeah, right down the hall, Major. Thank you. Well, good morning, Major. I'd like to speak Excuse to you for a minute me, about the... You were expecting maybe a small medal. You have violated the code, old buddy. A swirling skirt. Uh, I, I beg your pardon. I beg your pardon. The army thinks a swirling skirt, etc., etc., etc. And now the army is going to prosecute the lot of us, right? The traitor, the traitor's wife, and me. What you have made of yourself is called a pariah. 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 Frank, I mean it. I honestly don't think that Riker was properly defended. Not properly defended? David, where were you? What trial did you attend? I sat here and watched Major Norton haul out every trick in the book. Well, maybe that's what was the trouble. He was tricky, all right, but he didn't put the burden of proof on me where it belonged. He let me make him try to prove their alibi. Well, then you blew it apart. You tore Riker to bits on the stand. You showed him to be a liar and his whole story, a desperate grab at thin air. I didn't show Riker to be a liar. Just cornered, scared, mad at the world. Oh, well, that's too bad. What did you want to do? Throw a forensic fit and plead both sides of the case? Well, I had an idea there was justice involved and the majesty of something or other. You know, I wanted to feel like a victor, and I don't. I feel like a Toastmaster. Well, David, I'm not going to get into a massive thing about this with you because I don't know exactly what hair it is that you're splitting. But I do know this. 
The matter's on its way to the board of review. Your job is done, so forget it. Have a drink. That's an order. Okay. Captain Young. Yes? I'm Ann Riker. This is Paul Riker. I arrived less than an hour ago. Just in time to hear my husband has been tried, convicted, and sentenced. The army doesn't waste much time, does it? Well, the procedure of a court-martial well, is... The your... only thing procedure means to me, Captain Young, is that my husband is going to hang because he wasn't properly defended. Yes, yes, I was eavesdropping. Should I apologize? No, 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 certainly not. But don't misunderstand what you heard. The court conducted your husband's trial fairly and impartially. And they're going to just as impartially take his life. Because he couldn't prove he was innocent. Well, now, isn't that the opinion you were expressing to the Major well, just Well, my now? opinion doesn't count for very much. You've got to understand that. Do you believe my husband is a traitor? Yes, I'm sorry, I do. But uh, that's irrelevant, too. Well, didn't anyone believe... really believe he was innocent? I'm afraid I can't answer that. Uh, if you'll please excuse me. Captain... Will you talk to my husband? But, but what would be the point, Mrs. Riker? Now, the trial is over. From here on, I'm not involved in what happens. But you don't think he was properly defended. See him. If you decide he's innocent, there must be something you can do. I'm sorry. There isn't. <laughs> says to the bank president, now, this teller we're supposed to look for, how would you describe him? Well, the bank president thinks for a minute, and he says, uh, officer, I'd say he was six feet tall and $10,000 short. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty funny. Hey, Mike, mm -hmm. fill up a glass for the counselor. As a matter of fact, make it a double. Counselor's earned it, Mike. He just knocked off one of the enemy. Ah, oh, shut up, Lenny. Language, Captain, this is an officer's club. Uh, David, you know Colonel Miriam, my new CO? He took over when Colonel Chambers bought it. Yes, of course. I've had the pleasure of working with the Colonel. I want to congratulate you, Captain. Speaking for counterintelligence, I think you handled this Riker thing very, very nicely. Thank you, sir. Back to normal, David? Never knew I was away from it, Major. <laughs> I, uh, met Mrs. Riker. His wife? Uh-huh. Where? She was waiting in the hall when the trial ended. Hey, I saw her. That blonde? Very nice. She, she overheard our talk, Frank. I'm sorry to hear that. She got the impression that her husband didn't get a fair trial. Well, you're responsible for that. I hope you straightened her out. I tried. But, you know, she uh, asked me to talk to Riker. For what reason? I'm not quite sure I know myself. David, you were assigned to prosecute. You won a conviction for treason. You have completed your assignment. I'll give you another one in the morning. Am I getting through to you? Yes, sir. All right, if the air's been cleared, I'll say good night. I'll walk along with you, Frank. Fine. Good night, Leonard. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Hey, what's going on here? I thought you two were friends. Oh, we are. It's just uh, one of those times when he's being Major Whitaker argument over a girl or a 30-day leave. Now, that I can understand. But Riker, no need for an argument there. You won your case. He's gonna hang, boy. Or maybe it was an argument over a girl. Hmm? Oh, no, I think not. Sure. Now it comes to me. The lovely Mrs. Riker needs a champion, see? Uh, uh, bleeding heart. So you listen. You, you uh, offer a little sympathy, a few well-chosen words about how it's all a dirty shame. It's a workable plan, boy, and I'd be the last one to blame you. Put her curves on a baseball, you got yourself a no-hitter. Got a date with a small, curved friend of my own. Don't ever sell these Korean ladies short, old buddy. Strictly for the cognoscenti. No, sir, on me. I'm uh, going in town. Can I drop you off? Oh, thanks. I think maybe I'll have another. All right. Very workable plan, old buddy. Very workable.
to lock you in, Mrs. Riker. Oh, I... I never thought they'd let you know. I finally got a bath. I need you so badly. I'm heading for days, didn't they tell so you? So glad to see you. What are they doing to me? They're going to send me to Tokyo tomorrow. They're going to hang me. The board upheld the sentence. Well, you understand what that means, Ann? This is our last farewell. They really mean this. Yeah, they let my wife in to say goodbye. Paul, that isn't why they let me in. Oh, please, Ann. Come on, let's face it. Please, Paul. Why did you come here? Didn't I treat you badly enough? Didn't I hurt you often enough? Did you really have to come 6,000 miles? I don't know how all this started. All I know is it seemed so unfair. So unreal that it would be happening to you. Is that all? Paul, I don't know how much time they're going to give us. How much time do we need? What are we going to do? Shake hands? To me, Paul, there's still a chance. Paul, let me tell oh, you what I've done and who I've it. talked to. No, there is a chance. I talked to the prosecutor, Captain Young. It's brilliant! So don't you understand he's the guy that's put me here? But that's why. I overheard him talking to a Major Whitaker, and he said he didn't think you were properly defended. Now, if he thinks that, Paul, we do have a chance. Now, listen to me, Oh, you don't me, understand, please. Anne. You're fighting privilege of rank. Sanctity of influence. You know, I should get a medal for what I did. But that way, I'd get the headlines. This way... Those boys look like the heroes. Safeguarding the old system. Oh, Ann, look. Go ahead. Try anything you want. If you have a heart, they'll break it. And in the end, they'll turn you against me, too. Do you hear me? The buzzards. I'm sorry they didn't tell me you were here. What is it, Captain Young? If you're hoping to be the first to break the news, I hate to disappoint you. I already know that I'm being flown to the gallows tomorrow. I was never sure what the Board of Review would do. I just read their decision. My wife tells me you think that my lawyer did a lousy job defending me. I agree with you. She also tells me that you think that I was railroad. I agree with you again, but you're the high authority on that count, right? So what else is there? I didn't say that to your wife. I doubt that she said it to you. Did you ever prove in court that Colonel Chambers didn't leave classified orders? That he didn't confide in anyone about this? He didn't consult his own commanding officer, or yours, or his own staff. He didn't leave an envelope to be opened in case of his death. Nothing. Okay. I was with Merrill's Marauders in the CBI in World War II. That was the toughest duty in the Pacific, huh? I got the Silver Star for Valor, above and beyond the call. I even got my picture in magazines. It's in my service record. Now that proves one thing, that I'm a good soldier, right? That's also in the record if you try. Yeah, but Colonel Chambers knew that. That's why he got me. He needed some guy that wasn't afraid to stick his neck out for his lousy country. Because it might be a suicide mission, huh? So he gets me. I go along, but this one's not on the record, huh? Because he gets knocked off before he can put it in the record. Now I'm the hang, huh? Hooray for the red, white, and blue. Are you through? Okay. That's been covered, too. Now, give me something to go with it. Give me something I can use. One little thing. Something you can use for what? If there's any chance, no matter how remote, that you deserve a stay of execution, I'll try to get one for you. You? I, I don't get it. He's going to help us, Paul. Don't you understand that? Yeah, but how many ways can I tell the truth? When I lie to the commies, they believe me. I tell the truth here, I'm a traitor. How many times did you say you talked to Colonel Chambers? Oh, I only saw him once we talked about it. Tell me about hours. Tell me, tell me. about it. What he looked like? Blue eyes, gray hair, something like that? I could have seen him any place. Were his eyes blue? Yeah. 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 Any gray in his hair? I, I, I didn't notice. I... Now, you testified that in your presence he wrote a note about this mission of yours, huh? Yeah, that's right. Ah. With a pencil or a pen? He reached inside his jacket. A pen. Yeah, in a little notebook, I think. What kind of a pen? Uh, what color? Blue, with a silver clip. His right hand? Yeah. No, uh... No, I think it was his left hand, because I noticed he had a wristwatch on it. Any rings? A signet ring, class ring, wedding ring? 
said his wife was dead. Describe the wristwatch. Well, it was uh, round, uh, stainless steel, I think. You know, one of those self-winders you can buy up at the PX. That note is the one thing that could save you. Yeah. But you don't remember what he wrote it on. You say you think it was a notebook. And you're not sure what he wrote. Well, I mean... Yet you knew at the time it was a matter of vital importance, maybe life or death for you. If I'm only a soldier... But you don't remember it clearly because you didn't notice it clearly at the time. Is that right? Yeah, that's right. Then how is it you do clearly remember his fountain pen and his wristwatch? You may be a pretty fair liar, but uh, you're a fatally bad witness. How are you going to help me if you don't believe me? If what I believed was important, Sergeant, I wouldn't even be here. Get him! Get him out of here. He's only trying to help us, Paul. I know he is. I like the way he tries to justify his conscience. I wish I knew his secret. I'm even grateful that you're not in love with me. They're wrong, aren't they, Paul? What difference does it make? Either way, as usual, I lose. What do you think, Mr. Not Riker? just drop it. Please. All right, I'll drive over to Seoul and check out a few details. Thank you. But don't build any hopes, Mrs. Riker. This is all on my own, you know, and very unofficial. Captain? Could I go with you? No, I'm afraid not. The Reds are closing in on Seoul. Oh, please, it's only a short ride. I may be of some help. Okay. Thank you. And then I took a plane to Tokyo and hitched rides to Sasebo. Well, that's still Japan. How'd you get across the strait? I bribed a warrant officer. Oh? And from Busan? I stole this Red Cross uniform from a supply depot.
Are you all right? Yeah. I'm a poor target. We better get out of here. Chambers was my CO, so I went down to Wang Su myself to supervise his personal effects. It wasn't on the 32B report, but uh, was there a notebook in his blouse? You know, the kind that would fit inside his breast pocket? No, sir. How about a fountain pen? No, sir. Did he own a fountain pen? Probably. You'd have to look through his personal effects. Are they still here in Seoul? I believe so, sir. But Colonel Chambers was buried in Wang Su, is that right? They shipped his body down here before the Reds took over. General Bailey's ordered. I uh, understand the colonel was a widower. His wife had died just recently. Just to talk about her a great deal. Sergeant, what color were Colonel Chambers' eyes? They were brown. Sergeant, I'd like to see his things, if I may. Captain, we're in the middle of evacuating a post. I know that. But a man's life could depend on this, Sergeant. All right, come on. I want you to burn all the classified papers in the cans. Did he have another watch, PX variety, stainless steel? No, sir. It's the only watch he ever wore. And uh, this was his wedding ring, huh? Yes, sir. He had a sentimental streak. He never took off that ring. You're sure that this is all he had on him? Yes, sir, I'm sure. Well, no notebook, Mrs. Riker. Not an inexpensive PX watch, but a solid gold one, custom made. Not a blue fountain pen, but a maroon one. An expensive and somewhat unusual wedding band, which he always wore when your husband said no, no ring. rings. And the colonel's eyes were bright. General Bailey! Those reports are all duplicates. No use transporting them. Have them burned. Captain. Young, sir. Major Whitaker, stop. Yeah, well, how does it happen that you're... Now, what's going on here? Uh, General Bailey, Mrs. Riker. Ma'am. Well, Captain? Well, sir, we were uh, going through Colonel Chambers' effects. I thought it possible that something might have been overlooked, something significant. Significant? With regard to what? Sergeant Riker, sir. Who ordered this? My own responsibility, sir. Responsibility? Is Reich is a traitor, isn't he? Well, he's been condemned to death, sir. Well, for your information, Captain, there are several thousand men out there who are not traitors who are doing their best to evacuate this city. There is an army out there which is being driven back into the ocean. Now, do I understand that you feel a sense of responsibility to a man who has done his best to bring this about? Well, sir, I'm sure the General doesn't have time to discuss this now. I'm sorry if... Sergeant! Pack up that stuff, have it put on one of the evacuation trucks, and you'd better get yourself and Mrs. Riker back to your base at Incheon. Is that clear? Yes, sir. There's still one more thing I want to check out. Since uh, we're here, and since the general didn't specify when we were to leave, if Colonel Chambers ever did write a note about Riker, there's only one place left to look. The only place where it might possibly have been overlooked. On his body. In his uniform. Oh, no. 
our captain. Can you locate the grave? Sir. General Bailey ain't a man to fool with. He's as tough as an alligator stick. I mean, he court martial me just as soon as blow up a commie tank. And on top of that, sir, if you don't mind my saying so, he could nail you for direct disobedience to a command. And don't think he wouldn't do it. So you, you see, Captain Young, unless you come right our way, give me a direct order, sir. General Bailey got me out of bed at 6 o'clock this morning. There's no doubt about that. He chewed my hips to the bone, Captain, and I don't blame him. We're getting our tails scorched in this war, and you, you go flitting around, opening graves, discrediting the CIC, sticking your fingers into a dead man's personal effects, and you top it all off with a joyride through a combat zone with a female civilian. What are you trying to do, wreck your career? I'm trying to get a stay of execution for a man who's going to hang tomorrow. Baker's a turncoat and a liar, and you know it. Or you knew it yesterday. And now, all of a sudden, overnight, you want to blow this double-barreled traitor to a dinner at the Stork Club. I won't be satisfied until we find Chambers' body and search his uniform for that note. David, I do not hunger for this man's blood. His defense was my responsibility as well as his prosecution. But the trial was fair, and I know the verdict is right. Leave it alone, David. Leave it. Paul, please, please, let me talk to him a minute, Paul. What? Hey, come on, will you? Okay. Oh, I want you to know we haven't given up hope. Captain Young is still trying. Uh, don't let him forget this, Anne. Don't ever let him forget what they're doing to me now. Did you talk to Major Whitaker? He refuses to intercede. But why? After everything that's happened. Will they take him straight to Tokyo? Yes. Will they fly me there tomorrow? Tomorrow morning, probably. I'll see about arrangements. Thank you. Said I blame you. Man's entitled to die in peace. Business of a man lying on his deathbed, surrounded by mourning friends and relatives, always seemed to flounder and bore to me. You're trying to tell me something. I see you looking down the muzzle of a hair trigger army issue 45, old buddy. And you know whose finger I see on the trigger? Your finger, Captain, sir. Yours. Go away, will you? I'm in no mood for... Just one thing, David. Tell me why. Well, if you have to ask, as the poet says, you'll never know. You're up for a reprimand, you know that. For open insubordination. Disobeying General Bailey's specific orders in Seoul. Now, what are you trying to do? What it comes down to is that I'm... Trying to get Riker a stay of execution, that's all. Why? Because he's got a good-looking wife? All right, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, David. I, I had no call to say that. I, I, I'm sorry, David. But what is it, then? Zola and Dreyfus all over again? David, that world is dead. Along with millions of people. 
Old, young, innocent, guilty. What's one more? There's another way to look at it, Leonard. Suppose that one more were you. Oh, that's Bill Corn. It isn't me, it's you. It's your career, it's your whole future. Now, why put it all on the line for a dirty two-bit traitor? So, so now we all know that you have the courage of your conviction. If you'll forgive us. David, David, I'm sorry, I take it all back. You, you, you don't have the courage of your conviction. did not believe that you'd go so far as to come in here and get the general out of bed. What the devil do you hope to accomplish by coming in here and starting it right? That is, gentlemen. Captain, I don't want to burden you with my problems, General, General sir. But we happen to be engaged in the delicate tactic of an all-out retreat. I need the few hours sleep that I can steal. Now, just why precisely did you get me out of bed? Your fine record indicates you to be a man of some stability and intelligence. I can't believe this to be all a matter of a traitor. Sir, it is about Riker. He has only a few hours left, and I request permission to present my findings to you. I apologize, General. Against my explicit orders, Captain Young... All right. The man was convicted, wasn't he? The appeal board upheld. Yes, sir, but... And is it not true that the death penalty must be confirmed by the President of the United States or the Secretary of War acting for him. And has not all this been done? Yes, sir. All right, Captain. Let me take some of your time to point out a few of the side effects of this Riker case. We have some 200,000 troops in Korea. Almost every last man is aware of Riker's court-martial conviction and sentence. To them, it is a matter of deep satisfaction that this man, this traitor, who conceivably has put all our lives in jeopardy, is to be promptly hanged for his crime. Sir, I can understand... Don't that. interrupt me. Right now, the war we are fighting is going badly. We are losing its biggest battle. We need every ounce of endurance and determination that those men possess. Can you imagine the effect it will have on them if it should suddenly be headlined that Riker is getting a retrial because of some stupid technicality? Well, that's one side of the ledger. I assume the reason for this meeting is that you are going to show us the other side. Is Riker innocent? Uh, well, sir, uh, I have no reason to believe the man is innocent. In fact, uh, before the law, he's guilty. I established that in court. What is it now, Captain? The point of honor? A plea for mercy and payment for favors received? He spent the night with Riker's wife. Just what kind of a mind have you got? Reasonably dirty. Reasonably dirty, yes. Captain, is that true? Did you spend the night with her? I was, uh, with her... For a night, yes, sir. A night that nearly got both of us killed. You were with us for part of that night. All right. We'll drop that. And since you admit that Riker is guilty, if you'll give a little thought to the things I've said, I believe that you'll agree to drop the whole thing, Captain. I'm sorry, General. If I made that an order? Sir, with all due respect, I must say this. If there is no stay of execution, a cablegram will go to the Secretary of War and the President along with my report. What in heaven's name has gotten into you? How do you propose to justify such an act? By the official record, sir. In the case of Paul Riker, enough irregularities exist to warrant a stay of execution. That is simply not true! The first interrogation! There is no record that Captain Appleton warned him of the charges against him or advised him of his rights. Now, this is mandatory under the code. That was not an official interrogation. Captain Appleton was not conducting a pre-trial investigation. That's subject to interpretation. Sir. Sir, did you study the brief prepared by defense for the extenuation and mitigation hearing? In my opinion, it's an incompetent brief. And whether it makes sense to any of you or not, 
Colonel Chambers' uniform was not searched for an order or a note of explanation about a possible secret mission. There was no Riker problem at the time. It was just the uh, routine gathering of a dead man's personal effects. But now, sir, now, Colonel Chambers' body has disappeared. Disappeared? Oh, a foul up. We don't know that. Well, I will say this. Captain Young is a man who does his homework. Sir, you, you mentioned morale. Well, sir, uh, I think that uh, faith in justice has a lot to do with our morale. Now, if we made mistakes in Riker's trial, and they're exposed by anyone publicly after we put him to death, well, it's going to make every court-martial in the future look like a, a totalitarian star chamber. Sir, no one wants to set a traitor free, but I submit for your reasons, General, that this is a time to display the full effect of our concept of justice. That's all. You've certainly earned your stay of execution. In fact, I'll see to it that arrangements are made for a new trial. But this time, I am going to recommend that you defend Riker. Just to be sure that he has all the advantages of all your principle and all his rights. Major, I'm going to leave the selection of opposing counsel to you. With your permission, sir, I will serve as trial judge advocate. Well, suit yourself. And now, if no one objects, you're all dismissed. Who is it? David Young. Your husband's going to get a new trial. Oh, thank God. <laughs> Want some coffee? Please, don't bother. It's uh, so late. Sit down. Take off your coat and sit down. I, I would have... I would have waited until morning. But, uh... I just took a chance that you might still be up. You knew him. Uh, you, you, you don't, you don't love him, do you? How can you say that? I don't think you love him. Would I have come all this way and gone through everything I've gone? <laughs> you know, when we, when we talked about it, when, when I saw you, with him that night in the cell, I, I sensed what you felt about him. You felt pity, distress, belief in his innocence, loyalty, all the things that you should have felt. Except love. But it wasn't until tonight, not till just a moment ago, that I was really sure. I did once. We were married right after the war, and he, he was all full of life and, and confidence, and he was a hero. That wasn't important to me, but it was to him. After a year of a dozen jobs, a hundred disappointments, that was the end of it. It was just over. And then this war started, and he re-enlisted. End of story. And a very dull one at that. Well, what about this new trial? It's more than you'd hoped for, isn't it? It'll be held in Tokyo. I'll be defending him. It's wonderful, David. That'll give him a real chance, won't it? I hope so. 
take if I can get enough evidence. I love you, David. I love you. We're back to my dirty mind, Captain. You have no right to be here. We have every right. You're not a civilian here, Mrs. Riker. You come under the Articles of War. You had me followed. With my permission, Captain. He told me where you'd go. I let him try to prove it because I was so sure that I was dealing with a man of principle. You will be court-martialed on charges of insubordination and conduct unbecoming an officer. Sir! Well? The new trial for Sergeant Riker. Does that decision stand? Don't add to your problems by questioning my integrity. I promised the lady's husband a new trial and that you would defend him. That order stands. You will be placed in arrest after you have finished that assignment. You have made it yourself. It's called a pariah. 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 There's something like a martyr, only with more suffering and less class. Don't say I ever said I told you so. Investigation the first. On or about 20 October 1950, the accused did desert in the presence of the enemy. Second, that subsequent to that date, for a period of about one month, he did remain and willfully consort with the enemy. Third, that he did provide the enemy with information injurious to the United States. Fourth, that he attempted to return to our lines under orders from General Nam of the Red Chinese Army to aid the enemy cause and subvert our own as a secret agent and spy. Fifth. Mm. Thank you. Captain Leonard Appleton. Misery, sir. Human misery. your attention to these uniforms, Captain. And I ask you to tell the court if and under what circumstances you've seen them before. Paul Riker was wearing the red Chinese major's uniform when he was captured. He was trying to change into the American uniform. Mm-hmm. Now, Captain, why was Riker brought to you? Now, I'm chief interrogator for the counterintelligence corps unit then stationed in that area, sir. Sergeant, do you honestly expect me or anyone else to believe this story of yours? Captain, everything I've told you is true. If you'll just check it out with your commanding officer, Colonel Chambers, he'll... Paul William Riker. The Paul William Riker in this service record has been around long enough to know something about the functions of, uh, for instance, the CIC. Yes, sir. What are the functions of the CIC? Counterintelligence. But you were not in counterintelligence, had no intelligence training at all. Am I right? That's correct, sir. How long had you known Colonel Chambers? Well, I didn't know him until I finally met him. You're trying to tell me that Colonel Chambers pulled you out of a line outfit without even so much as a word to your commanding officer. And the colonel had a whole section of trained experts at his disposal. But he bypassed all them and picked you and sent you behind enemy lines on a secret intelligence mission. Very hush-hush. Captain, sir. I was Colonel Chambers' aide. He never mentioned anything about this mission of yours or you either. Sir, uh... Colonel Chambers had reason to believe that there was an intelligence leak in his own unit. That meant he had to go outside and find somebody he could trust. And when he learned that I spoke Chinese... How do you know you spoke Chinese? With all due respect, Captain, just check it out with your commanding officer. Sergeant! Colonel Chambers is dead! Killed by a sniper's bullet less than 24 hours after you were reported missing. So let's stop kidding each other, Riker. Colonel Chambers didn't send you on any mission. You defected. You were on your way back to our lines as a spy for your commie friends. You were caught getting out of your Chinese major's outfit, so now you're trying to feed me a cover story. Now you listen to... Colonel Chambers must have left a, a note or an order, something that would clear me. I mean, he'd have to do that. The Colonel most certainly would have left a note if your story is true. But no such record has turned up. As far as I'm concerned, Riker... You're a lying commie. Now, until his death by a sniper's bullet on October 21st, 1950, was Colonel Chambers in command of that particular CIC unit? Yes, sir. He was my CO. I was his acting executive officer and his close personal friend. In the period immediately preceding his death, 
Did he confide in you in any way that he was worried about a, a leak of information from his own office, from your office? He did not. Do you know that Colonel Chambers ever made an assignment of a completely secret nature? Objection. Completely secret is, by definition, completely secret. Sustained. All right. Now, Captain, as an officer of counterintelligence, if you were to assign a man to special secret duty, would you under any circumstances do so without in some way recording that order? It'd be mandatory to record it, sir, for everyone's protection. But to the best of your knowledge, did Colonel Chambers leave any verbal or written record whatsoever of assigning Paul William Riker to special secret duty? No, sir. Riker was not in our unit. The Colonel had no authority to assign him to anything. Thank you, Captain. Your witness, sir. Captain, did you mean to say that Colonel Chambers absolutely could not have given an assignment outside his own organization? Well, it'd be very, very unlikely. Thank you. Does the court have any questions? No questions. The witness is excused, subject to recall. The witness is reminded that he's still under oath and is not to discuss his testimony or the case with anyone. But Captain Young did not obey General Bailey's order. He did a little later, sir. But not immediately. Oh, sir. He requested me to show him where Colonel Chambers was buried. Well, Colonel Chambers was killed at Wang Su. Yes, sir. But some of the bodies were sent back before the Reds took over up there. And General Bailey ordered Colonel Chambers' body sent back, so he was buried at Seoul. Mm -hmm. So you took... Captain Young and the lady to Colonel Chambers' grave. Yes, sir. What did you do there, Sergeant? We dug up the Colonel's coffin. coffins shipped back from the battlefronts to Seoul for burial. How many have been found to be empty by Graves registration? I heard about maybe three, four. So an empty coffin is a somewhat rare but not unknown mistake. I suppose, yes, sir. Now, however, if there were an important note on a body, in a coffin, in a grave, and you were to exhume that body to get that note, would you bother to carry off the whole body or just simply the note? Just the note, I guess. Oh, and not the whole body? Not even if you were some nefarious culprit who Objection. for some dark reason wanted Paul Riker to hang? Objection! Improper, Major! Strike that whole conjecture. My apologies to the court. I withdraw the question. Cross-examine. Sergeant. You saw Colonel Chambers' body at Wang Su? Yes, sir. Would that be a logical place to look for the Colonel's body now? Yes, sir. Except the Reds hold blank suit now. Mm -hmm. Now, did you carefully search the Colonel's body for any secret documents? No, sir. Just routine. We, we weren't looking for any note. This was before Sergeant Riker was arrested. Thank you. Oh, uh, one more thing, Sergeant. When I asked you to take me to Colonel Chambers' grave, you refused. And only agreed because I gave you a direct order. Correct? Yes, sir. That's all. Thank you. Thank you, Captain. Does the court have any questions? No questions. Sergeant, you're excused, subject to recall. Call Captain Alexander Dorn. Captain Alexander Dorn. Raise your right hand, please. Who's he? You I don't know. The testimony you're about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God. I do. Please be seated. Good 
Majesty. State your name, rank, organization, and armed force. Alexander Dorn, Captain, Infantry, United States Army. Now, Captain, I understand you only recently returned to active duty. That's true, sir. I was captured by the North Koreans and held as a prisoner of war. I was captured on the 30th of November and escaped on the 24th day of December. We congratulate you on your escape, Captain. Now, while you were in prison, were you interrogated by the enemy? I was taken to a Chinese general, General Nam. He questioned me. Was it just uh, general probing? No, sir. General Nam's questions were based on the information of our situation. They were pointed, knowledgeable questions, sir. Was there an interpreter present? No, sir. General Nam speaks perfect English. Mm -hmm. Were there other Chinese present, uh, members of his staff? Yes, sir. And one American, wearing the uniform of a red Chinese major. Did the American participate? He guided the questioning, sir. Is that American present in this room? He is, sir. That man. Indicating the accused, Paul William Riker. Thank you, Captain. Your witness, sir. Does the defense wish to cross-examine? Move to strike Captain Doran's entire testimony. State your grounds, Captain. His testimony is irrelevant, unless it's construed to confirm defense. We don't deny. On the contrary, we insist that Sergeant Riker, acting on orders from Colonel Chambers, deliberately established himself on General Nam's staff as an American secret agent. Now, the defendant uh, necessarily had to conduct himself in such a way as to convince General Nam and indeed Captain Dorn that he was devoted to the cause of communism. We even stipulate that Colonel Chambers provided him with uh, supposedly vital information to give to the enemy. Any other course would have been totally ineffective. Motion to strike is denied. You may cross-examine. No questions, sir. Does the court have any questions? No questions. All right, Captain. You're excused, subject to recall. Call your next witness, Major. Call Mr. Thomas McKnight. You do know this one. Thomas McKnight. Who is he? Will you raise your right hand, please? Do you swear the testimony you're about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? I do. Please be seated. Thank you. Will you uh, state your name and occupation, please? My name is Thomas McKnight. I'm chief engineer aboard the freighter Clinton out of New York and London. Mr. McKnight, is there a man in this courtroom whom you recognize and know personally? Yes. Yes, I know Paul Riker. Now, will you tell the court why you are in Tokyo? Well, I was brought here as a witness because I recognized these pictures in the San Francisco paper. Where did you know Paul Riker? From school, Western State University. Well, you lived together, roomed together? That's right, for about a year. Oh? Well, that is until Paul failed his exams and dropped out. You see, the four of us roomed together in this sort of small dormitory. Paul and me, this other kid, and Kim Lee. Kim Lee? Chinese? That's right. Mr. McKnight, I show you this San Francisco newspaper entered as prosecution exhibit number four, containing an account of the trial of Paul Riker for treason December last. Is this the newspaper you read? That's it. And these are the pictures you recognized. Paul Riker and Kim Lee. Would you please read aloud to the court the name in the caption of this picture, the man you identify as Kim Lee? Yes, it says here that this is a picture of a Chinese officer named General Nam. General now. Thank you, sir. Your witness, Captain. No questions. All right, turncoat. Come on, swing now. Take a swing at me now. Captain. You yellow lying son of. All right, I'm sold out. Oh, baby, I beg for it, but not her. She did not. Your wife 
And the United States of America, God help them, did not. Captain, I didn't the know. The only the thing that you didn't know was that your rotten lies were going to catch up with you. Captain, I couldn't tell them I went to school with General Nam. On top of everything else, they'd hang me for sure if that came up. Well, it's out, brother. Oh, it is out. And you have branded yourself a rotten liar in the court's book, in my book, all the way down the line. Captain, I was plainly and simply scared. I'm a combat. Oh, come on, right, right here. What are you? Marauders. I got the Silver Star. But look, I am not a mental acrobat. Okay, so maybe I'm a lousy liar. But when Captain Appleton told me that morning when they brought me in that Colonel Chambers was dead and that my story could get me hung without a trial, I got scared. I'm still scared. Okay, so maybe I made a few mistakes. You know, I... But I am innocent. I swear to God. Oh, so. yes, I swear. I swear, I swear to you. Don't watch it, Mac. I swear to you the Colonel Chambers knew about Kim Lee and me. That's why he came to me. Oh, that's beautiful. Chambers knew that General Nam and Kim Lee, your old college buddy, were one and the same, huh? That's right. And how did Chambers know that? Well, I told him. Oh, excuse me. See, I thought that you only talked to uh, Chambers once, you know, like for about two hours. Oh, yeah, that's true, but I wrote him a letter before. Oh, you wrote him a... <laughs> Maybe I should have mentioned it before, but what's the use? He burned that letter right in front of my own eyes. <laughs> and then he came down to our outfit. We were bivouacking this gully outside of Langon. He was wearing a PFC's uniform. Well, we had a smoke, and he asked me what I had in mind. Well, back in college, Kim Lee and I were, you know, pretty good friends. Uh, Kim Lee, General. No. And then he told me about this information leak. And he asked me if I'd be willing to desert, you know, to fake a desertion and see if I could sell myself to Cab General Nam and maybe plug up the leak. You know something else that Colonel Chambers told me? He said that, Sergeant, if you fail on this mission, you might have to have the courage to die as a spy or a traitor. I don't want to hang. Guilty or innocent, you have one chance. Now, tell the story beginning with Western State University up to and including the present conversation in every detail. I told you I wouldn't go on that stand again. Let me challenge them. I don't think they can prove that you're lying. Let me put you on the witness stand. Oh, no, I don't want to go on the Now, look, stand. Riker, all you have to do is go through it once. No, I won't Tom, do it. You have to. I do not. <laughs> ah, here we are, David, old buddy. What you need most, a jolt of gladiator tonic especially concocted for benighted idealists to go around tilting at windmills. Most especially welcome on those rare occasions when the windmills tilt back. Justice sharpens her sword on the skins of lawyers. Little motto I just made up by Oliver Wendell Holmes. Thank you, Leonard. You're a bomb and consolation to me. David, having disobeyed orders by trying to get this second trial, you now have a court-martial hanging over your own head. Now, now, why not throw in the sponge on this nature's mistake? Show General Bailey that you are properly contrite, and he'll most likely drop the charges. I know he won't court-martial you just for making a little time with Mrs. Riker. Oh, come off it, Leonard. What David, you... you have to get yourself off this lousy hook. Leonard, thank you for the drink. Now, why don't you just get lost, huh? Because I'm trying to help you. I'm to... Uh-oh. Didn't you tell me once at Incheon you'd become a one-woman man? This is the one, old buddy. Some of my best friends are pilots. They flew her in from Incheon. Captain Young, may I present a small Korean passion flower, Nari. How do you do? How do you do? Am I early? Oh, not at all. A uh, chair. A uh, princess. Pretty seat thyself. Thank you. Yuki, uh, another double here, a single for the lady. David, uh, would you excuse me, please? Oh, don't run off, old buddy. No, there's uh, there's somebody that I have to see. Well, if you feel you must. Oh, well, 
Well, he's a little old and slow for us anyway, huh? <laughs> Captain, Captain. I, I just want to tell you, I appreciate what you did for me in the courtroom. I That's mean, all right, sir. I can return the favor. I, uh, I just promoted a Jeep. She oh. told me to drive you around town. Well, thanks. I may take you up on that. Excuse me. Anne? Oh, David, I just got through talking to Paul. Look, I have to talk to you. Right? Come on. Did you manage to convince him he's got to take that stand? No, I didn't. Oh, Anne. And I think he's right. I think he would blow up. All right. So he won't testify tomorrow. Well, David, why can't you put me on the stand as a character witness? And you're his wife. Your testimony as a character witness wouldn't mean a thing. I got into this because there was a principle involved. Now I'll try the only thing left to try. A lousy, hair-splitting technicality. Now, Sergeant Riker was interrogated by Captain Appleton. Captain Appleton didn't apprise him of his rights. Captain Appleton has stated under oath that he did not conduct an official pretrial investigation and therefore he didn't have to apprise him of his rights. But the regulations are clear, sir. Captain Appleton can claim that exemption only if he was actually in command of the post at the time of the interrogation. Very well. Seems Colonel Merriam had left the post and therefore Captain Appleton was in fact in command. Defense wishes to establish at what time Colonel Merriam returned. Seems here he returned after the interrogation. That is the subject of examination, sir. To what purpose, Counselor? One way or the other? There are precedents in support of this. In one case, where an accused was not properly apprised of his rights, a general court-martial was reduced to a special court-martial. So the time when Colonel Merriam actually returned and assumed command of his post is pertinent in determining whether or not this court ought to dismiss. Very well. Proceed. Thank you. Were you on the post at the time of interrogation? No, I was not on the post at the time of interrogation. At what time did you return? I don't remember the time exactly. Did you go immediately to your office after you returned to the post? No, I first stopped off at my quarters. And how long did you remain in your quarters? Well, uh, to the best of my recollection, about uh, 30 minutes. Oh, could it have been an hour? 45 minutes? Objection. The witness has already answered that question. Sustained. Did you note the time after you first arrived at your office? I object to this whole line of time question. Sustain. If the court please, precise time is the essence of my argument here. The witness has testified to the best of his recollection and he is not to be harassed unduly. Proceed. But how am I going to establish exactly when the, the court... The court is well aware of what you're trying to establish, Counselor. Proceed. Do you wear a watch, Colonel? I do. Did you happen to look at your watch at any time? Objection. Sustained. Didn't you even glance at the office clock? Objection. Sustained. If the court please. Now, how is it going to be possible for me to determine exactly who was in command at the time of the court interrogation? is not obligated to advise you, counselor. Please proceed. But you are sustaining every objection by trial counsel. I haven't got a Since chance Since we're embroiled in technicalities, Captain, I'm sure you understand that the court does have an obligation to the witness. Now, will you please proceed? No more questions. I have no questions of this witness, sir. Does the court have any questions? No question. All right, the witness is excused, subject to recall. Next witness, Captain. Well? Captain? Captain Young. Yes, sir. All right, Riker. This is the end of the line either way. Now, you can do as you see fit, but I'm not going to quit until I give you one last chance to tell your story. Defense calls Paul William Riker to the stand. your right hand, please. You swear the testimony you're about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God. I do. Be seated.
State your name, rank, organization, and armed force. Uh, Paul William Riker, Sergeant Infantry, U.S. Army. Now, Sergeant, I want you to tell this court in your own words how you met Colonel Chambers and about all the subsequent events. Well, uh, it all started with this photograph in the newspaper and uh, the, uh, the caption under it identified the photograph as a general nom, the Red Chinese Army. But I recognized him as a man that I knew as Kim Lee at Western State University. I thought it was my duty to bring this to the attention of the CIC. I thought the information might be valuable. Well, I, I didn't know Colonel Chambers, but I knew of him, so I sent him the information in an envelope marked confidential. Poor devil, I wonder what lies he's telling now. Anyway, that means they're going to wrap this whole thing up in a few hours. That's the truth. So, so help me God, that is the truth. It's the whole story just as it happened. Cross-examine. That's interesting, Sergeant. Fascinating. Well, now, you've, uh, you've told the whole thing, haven't you? The whole truth. Yes, sir. In a letter that you wrote to Colonel Chambers, I'm kind of curious as to why you didn't mention that in your first version of your story. I mean, at the first trial. Well, maybe I should have, but I just felt that everything was against me. Well, then, at your first trial, you did not tell the whole truth. You lied under oath. Well, no, sir. I just left out one thing. Left out any mention of your ten-year friendship with Kim Lee, General Nam, as we now know him. I wonder why. I've already told you. Were you ashamed, perhaps? Objection. The question's already been answered twice. Sustained. Please. Sir, this man is a self-confessed perjurer. Why is a liar not a liar? Major! My apologies to the court, sir. Did you desert in the field in the presence of the enemy? I did not. You did not desert? I was operating under Colonel Chambers' orders. A colonel in the United States Army ordered you to desert. Is that your statement? When I accepted this assignment, I... I pretended you to You pretended to be a communist, and then you came back here and pretended not to be one. I was not pretending. Pretending here or pretending there? Pretending here. Well, Sergeant, you re-enlisted in the Army just before the outbreak of hostilities in Korea? That's right. Did you know the red aggression in Korea was coming? How could I know that? Well, with a friend like Kim Lee, you might very well have known. Isn't that true? Objection! Isn't that true? No, no, no. Don't answer that. Please. Now, did you give vital military information to the enemy? You know I did. Colonel Chambers gave me information to give them. Colonel Chambers gave you vital military information to hand on to the enemy. No, not vital. By what means were you passing the information before you crossed the lines and joined the war? Yes, sir! Yes, you you spy with me! That will do. Now, both of you have been badgering this court. Now, at the next violation of proper conduct, I'm going to suspend and write letters of reprimand. Well, what does that mean? Does that mean they can call me a liar and a spy as long as they're polite about it? Uh, that'll do right No, now. I'm beginning to see who's on trial here, and it's not me. It's that lousy roll book. Oh, yeah, Paul William Riker, may he rest in peace. Where am I? Did you look at my cell? Did I fall off the world or something? Words come out of my mouth, they don't mean one lousy thing. Sergeant, I'd better advise you. Anything you say is... I don't important. need any of your advice. Just let me out of here. Sergeant, you have not been dismissed. Sit down. Shut your mouth. I don't have I to shut my down. mouth. Just sit down. Captain, I don't give a hoot about your conduct here. I open my mouth, nobody hears, huh? I told you not to put me on that stand, huh? but you put me there anyway. It's all pretty clear to me now. You and my wife. Oh, boy, just great, huh? And you. Boy, just great, huh? Great American tradition. Okay, boys, I'm gonna hold a little honest trial here and I'm gonna hang him, huh? Oh, boy. Look, go ahead and do anything you want to do, but you're not gonna make a patsy out of me anymore. You know, I put my life on the line. My life on the line! And you put me through this! Go ahead, hang me. But I'm gonna tell you something. You're dead already. When I think of what I did in China, Burma, for guys like you, and nobody cared, because when the little guys were gone, the fat-mouthed brass hats took over. 
huh? A sick society that despised me because they owe me so much. Now you won't even give me a credit card. You want to know what happened over there? They believed me. They made me a major with honors. And you are going to make me a posse? Go on, put a rope around my neck. Stop my mind. I try to save some American lives, but forget what I did, huh? Just hang me, stop my thinking. What I think about you. You and your proper conduct. You and your lousy everything that you stand for. Because I only made one mistake, boys. I came back. <laughs> I'll go back tomorrow and go through the motions. General Bailey's in Tokyo. I've asked him to appear, but... It's just mechanical, land. I can't save it. It's over. Captain Young. Yes, Sergeant. I don't know whether this is important or not, but... Uh, I heard this scuttlebutt today. Well, about the trial. Something about you trying to find out if Colonel Chambers was in the habit of sending guys out on strictly secret assignments. That's no scuttlebutt, Sergeant. Well, he was my CO, sir. Always used to run around doing things, you know? And he actually only sent me out once on the QT. So, I mean, you couldn't exactly say he was in a habit. Besides, it was no big deal or anything. No, no wait, wait a minute, hold on. Are you saying that Colonel Chambers once gave you a secret assignment? Well, I guess you could call it that. He asked me not to tell anybody, sir. All right, Captain, you may proceed. Defense wishes to recall a prosecution witness, sir, for further cross-examination. Sergeant Max Winkler. Get the court, please. I've been requested to appear here. Now, hasn't my deposition been received and noted? Uh, yes, General. Thank you for coming, sir. If you just sit down. Counselor, would it be possible to accommodate the General now? Well, I'm sorry, sir, but I have another witness to present before the general. Captain Young, do you realize the general is on a very tight schedule? Uh, sir, I had uh, no power to do anything but request your appearance here, and I appreciate that you've honored that request. But naturally, if you feel that your duties elsewhere require it, I'll excuse you as a witness. Uh, would you like to sit down here? Call Sergeant Winkler. Sergeant Max Winkler. Sergeant, you're still under oath. Please take the stand. Proceed. Sergeant, you were attached to CIC? Yes, sir. And Colonel Chambers was your commanding officer? Yes, sir. Captain Appleton has testified that Colonel Chambers never gave confidential assignments. Do you agree? No, sir. He once gave me a confidential assignment. But wouldn't the Colonel's personal aide, Captain Appleton, know about this? No, sir. Why not? The Colonel told me not to tell him. He told me not to tell anybody, not even members of his own personal staff. Now, Sergeant, what was this confidential uh, secret mission? Well, he wanted to find out about this Korean girl, where she lived, things like that. And did you give him the information he sought? No, sir, I was getting it all together, and then he was killed. Would you please mark this as defense exhibit number one for identification? Thank you. Major. Sir? Defense exhibit number one for identification is admitted in evidence as defense exhibit number one. Sergeant, I show you this notebook. Do you recognize it? Yes, sir, that's my book. When Colonel Chambers gave me the name of the suspect, I wrote it in that book. Well, would you please indicate where you wrote it? Right here, very last page. Your witness, Major. No questions. Court, have any questions? No questions. The witness is excused, subject to recall. 
Defense recalls Captain Appleton. Captain Leonard Appleton. Captain, you're still under oath. Please take the stand. Yes. Leonard? How long have we known each other? Oh, six, seven months. And from time to time you've confided in me. Uh, I, I was going to say about your romances, but I don't mean to imply they've all been confidential. No, I, I don't want to embarrass you, Leonard. I simply want to establish that uh, we've had drinks together. And uh, you've talked to me about the girls you've dated? You have to be more careful who I drink with. You say too much when you've had too many? You're making that very clear, old buddy. For uh, several months now, you've been keeping steady company with one particular Korean girl. Yes or no? Yeah. And this girl recently flew from Korea to Tokyo to join you here? Yeah. Were you with her two nights ago? Well, you know I was. You saw us. And the night before that? Yes. And last night? As a matter of fact, you've been with her every night since she arrived here in Tokyo. Now, isn't that true? Yeah. Tell me, uh... Did you usually have a few before these visits? Did, did I have a... Have drinks, a few drinks. Had a highball or two? Now, no, come on, Leonard. More like five or six. Five or six doubles. Doubles? Shall I subpoena the hotel bartender? I did not keep tally. When you visited with this woman, didn't you customarily bring along a supply of liquor? Where in the name... Where's the relevance of all this? Hmm. Captain, what is the name of this woman whom you've been seeing regularly, drinking and talking with regularly for the past four or five months? Nari. You see this Korean name written here? Yes, I see it. Would I'll you read it that. aloud, please? You're trying to humiliate me, old buddy. And Lord knows for what reason. Sir, do I have to take this kind of personal abuse from him? Captain, I see no reason why you shouldn't cooperate unless you're afraid that you'll be incriminated. Incriminate? Of course I don't think I'll incriminate myself. I mean, I, I don't understand how I could. And now, the name written here is Nari. It, it is the name of the, the Korean lady of my acquaintance. Leonard, the court has just heard evidence that Colonel Chambers did indeed give a secret assignment. So secret that the man involved was told not even to inform you of his mission, which was to investigate this particular Korean girl, Nari. No, 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 that, that can't be. No, I mean, I, mean I, I know this lady's character. Oh, sure, there might have been a routine investigation, but... Last night I tried to subpoena Nari. She ran out on the MPs who were sent to serve her. This morning, I learned that she's asked for and been granted political asylum in the Soviet embassy. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Any questions? No questions. Captain, you're excused. Subject to recall. Have Appleton placed under arrest. Confine him to quarters under guard. The defense rests. This court will reconvene tomorrow morning at 10 o'clock if a verdict has been reached. Adjourned. Are they going to set him free? There's no question of that.
the uh, question is, what comes after? Regardless of the verdict, he'll never be completely cleared. There'll be those who won't believe him or trust him. He can have his life. Just his life. That's all. You think he's innocent? Yes. Well, he... He'll have that too, won't he? Then let you see him now. Sergeant Paul William Riker, this court in closed session and upon secret written ballot has found you not guilty of the charge and all specifications. This court is adjourned. Thank you, Counselor. You are a persistent, stubborn, hard-headed man. But whatever else you did, you plugged a security leak that was costing us. Thank you, sir. And you saved the life of a man who might be one of the war's great heroes. You corroborated his story. I corroborated the part about the security leak, yes. And I believe that I raised a reasonable doubt about his guilt. You mean that you're not convinced of his innocence? General, there are only two men who could ever really know for sure whether Riker's a traitor or a hero. Colonel Chambers, of course, was one. And the other? Sergeant Riker. Mm -hmm.